Okay, it's time for the next update. I built this, this, and a curvy launch. Here we go. All right, let's get you up to speed. I'm building Copperhead Strike at Carowinds. In the first couple of videos, we built this magnetic launch that barely gets over this first loop, which is exactly what the real roller coaster does. Now it's time to build a first of its kind curvy launch, which we can see the real ride also has. First up, we gotta build a bunch of these coil housing assemblies. So that means straight to the 3D printer. My printer is not jammed currently and I'm not upset about it whatsoever. Once they're done, we pop them off and uh, you know, that's all we gotta do about that. They come right off real easy. The supports are not too bad for these ones, but we do have to print them in a kind of interesting orientation. So that way they print all nice and juicy and good. The next thing I have to do is make a bunch of the same length wire. I don't even know how many I have to make. It's like six times a lot. How many coils did I make? I made 12, so six times 12. That's how many black wires I made. Look, here's me cutting them like just a bunch of freaking times and you go, oh wow, Mike, that's a lot of wire. I go, yeah, that's why I don't wanna make these for anybody else because it's a lot of wire. And then I have to take all the Hall Effect sensors and match them up with all the wires so that way I can impress upon you how much work I have to put into making all of these so you guys like and comment and subscribe. And then I have to strip all the wires. Stripping all the wires takes a long time, but I bought this tool and it makes it easy. Then I have to cut all the shrink tube. Here's me opening it up and grabbing some, and then I gotta cut three at a time. And then, oh, look at this, four at a time. He's so good. Next up, it's time to solder all these wires to the Hall Effect sensors. Might I remind you, I have to do this for two Hall Effect sensors times three times however many freaking coils I said. I said 12 last time. I lied. I'm a liar. I said it's actually eight. I'm only doing eight coils. We'll figure out why in the future. You should keep watching. Anyways, there's a lot you have to do to solder this. So I'm going to post this meme up in the top left hand corner to hold your guys' attention. Next, I got to slide all these shrink tubes on. You saw me cut the shrink tubes. You were very impressed. I did four at a time like a big boy. I don't own a heat gun, so I have to use a lighter to shrink the shrink tube and that's okay. It's okay that I do that and it's not a problem whatsoever. Now we're back to soldering. You thought I was done soldering? No, I have to keep soldering. I always solder. I'm never done soldering. This thing is killing me. Someone teach me how to do PCB design or someone do it for me for free. I have no money. I just got monetized. We've made like $5 on this YouTube channel. If you'll do it for $5, we need a PCB. If I have a PCB for this, then everyone can have a magnetic launcher. But if I've got to use my two tiny hands to build everything, then it's going to be a problem. Here's another meme. Here's me sitting at my desk doing what? Probably soldering. That's all I ever do. Also, I have a Patreon. If you subscribe, you get some updates faster, or not really faster, but you can see me complain in text-based form with pictures attached. It's only $3. It helps this a lot. I've got like one guy who subscribed to the patron. I've given him 3D files just cause he asked and he's a nice guy and he gave me $10. Anyways, here's the 8K rat spin in the top right hand corner to hold your attention. It comes accompanied with the Freebird solo but I obviously can't post that with this. We're pretty much done with the Hall Effect sensors now, so I can finally move on to soldering the coils. We gotta do the same freaking thing. Those black wires that I cut a bajillion of, we have to solder to the coils as well. Just like the Hall Effect sensors, I have to put the heat shrinks over the wires and get the lighter back out. I was making light of this issue before, but it really isn't a problem. You're allowed to do this. This is fine. Now it's housing assembly time, so I gotta bend the Hall Effect sensors. They slide right into these little grooves inside each of the housings, just fine and easy. There's no problems with that. I didn't have to make any retrofits, I promise. And then it's crimping wires time. We're crimping all the wires. I've also not crimped the wrong gendered connector onto these ever, never, ever, ever. I've never done that before and I've not regretted that ever. Then we cut the cable sleeve because I was hell bent on these things looking pretty. We install the coil into the housing and then I install the crimped wires into the connector. Okay, coils are done. What else do I have to do? Oh yeah, the boxes. We've got two more control boxes that I have to make and I'm not even gonna go through the process of that. Maybe I'll film that another time. But here are the two extra control boxes we're gonna use for this launch and I'm putting code on them. So I have to go and switch from the uh, what's its face? The the speed controller code. That's what I have to do. And then I got to build it. So I got to go back to the normal full speed code. And then we're going to build it. And here's me using a terminal. I'm very good at using a terminal. I can copy and paste. Yeah, that's right. 
tell your mom. And then we're gonna put it on the microcontroller. Just plug a little USB right in the meow, and then we're gonna plug a debug thing right into meow, and that's gonna allow us to flash code on it. I could just drag and drop, but I'm on Linux, and I don't know how anything works on Linux. So I'm gonna hit the debug button in VS Code, and that's gonna put the old code on when then we'll be done. So what else do I have to do? Here's a beam, I guess, because it's gonna do the build stuff. Look at all these lines. It looks like I'm a hacker man, but uh, I'm really not. This is all just some code that someone else wrote that's doing all of these lines. Here's some B-roll shots of me testing the two new boxes, making sure everything works. And at this point, two thirds of you have stopped watching. So we're gonna vibe shift to something a little bit lower energy for the rest of the video. Hey there, how's it going? Kind of built some stuff without telling you anything about it. So let's let's get through a couple things. Let's start with this. This was something I wasn't expecting to get sidetracked on, but uh, nevertheless, I did. So as we can see here, you know, the launch, not very flat. What a feature, wow. Anyways, the ball couplings, which I had stolen from the original Kinex cars, were scraping. I can't really make it do it right now. Oh, you hear that? You might hear that. Anyways, it scrapes on here. There's a, there's a line, look, right there. That's from the rubbing. Makes it go slower, we don't like that. So I had to spend some time designing this little guy which is my own ball socket to connect the two cars together. I was gonna do this eventually because we're moving to fully 3D printed cars, but I didn't wanna do that quite yet. But now we have it. Also, this is car number two or train number two. I haven't 3D printed everything yet. Do you really want this video to take even longer to come out? No, no you don't. Here's what the other car looks like with the newly installed ball sockets. You can see the pitch of the cars, they get a little bit closer together, which is nice because then we can go to a four car train like the actual ride. The other thing I built was the inverted top hat and second loop, obviously. But after I introduced the new ball joints, the car now flies like way too fast over this, which I'm actually kind of pleased about. So now I can make this taller again. If you were a patron, you would know that I was struggling with getting the height tuned for all of this. Turns out the problem was the ball sockets the entire time I could have gone with my original height. Oh well, subscribe to my Patreon. Anyways, car goes way too fast. I'll show you a clip of that now. For the uninformed, copyright strikes really centered around hang time and making it over the inverting elements like really slowly. So this thing like, flew through the loop and that's not what we want. So I'm going to raise this, raise that, and that'll be that for this video. Oh, also I had to go with a three module setup for this launch. I thought I was gonna get away with two, but it wasn't fast enough. I've only ordered enough parts to make five modules and this one had three, so I had to take one from it. So the next video, I'll have to build up another launch module, which is the least fun thing to do for this project. All right, I made the top hat and the loop taller. You guys all saw the YouTube short I posted, right? And if you can't tell that I made it taller, then just be polite and say, wow, Mike, that looks really good. Because you're loyal subscribers, all of you, every single one of you. So yeah, I mean, we're gonna call it at that for this update. Uh, I'm, you know, doing really timely updates here. So the next one will be yeah, probably in a couple of weeks, if not days, you know, it comes out so quickly. So get subscribed and I'll see you in the next video, which will definitely be soon, I promise. Oh, also because I only have enough parts for one complete launch, we're gonna drop the car from the top of the first loop because it has hang time and it basically clears the loop with like no speed anyways. It's pretty much the same thing. We'll get both launches working in the next update.